from St. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. For I received from the Lord what I handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and after giving thanks, broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also the chalice after supper saying, This chalice is the new covenant of my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this chalice, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and with your spirit. spirit. Nice to see so many at church this morning. And today's Mass is being offered for Georgia Corbina. So as we celebrate these sacred mysteries and pray for Georgia, let us call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you raise us to new life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you forgive us our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Please bow your heads and pray in silence for Georgia Corbina. O God, who renew the world through mysteries beyond all telling, grant, we pray, that your church may be guided by your eternal design and not be deprived of your help in this present age. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, Lo, I am about to create new heavens and a new earth. The things of the past shall not be remembered or come to mind. Instead, there shall be rejoicing and happiness in what I create. For I create Jerusalem to be a joy and its people to be a delight. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and exalt in my people no longer shall they no longer shall the sound of weeping be heard be heard there or the sound of crying no longer shall there be in it an infant who lives but a few days or an old man who does not round out his full lifetime he dies a mere youth who reaches but a hundred years and he who fails of a hundred shall be thought accursed. They shall live in the houses they build and eat the fruit of the vineyard they plant. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A responsorial psalm. <clears throat> I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. I will extol you, O Lord, for you draw me clear and did not let my enemies rejoice over me. O Lord, you brought me up from the netherworld. You preserved me from among those going down into the pit. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. Sing praise to the Lord, you his faithful ones, and give thanks to, the holy, to his holy name, for his anger lasts but a moment, a lifetime, his goodwill. At nightfall, weeping in his end, but with the dawn, rejoicing. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. Hear, O Lord, and have pity on me. O Lord, be my helper. You change my mourning into dancing. O Lord, my God, forever will I give you thanks. I will praise you, Lord, for you have rescued me. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Seek good and not evil, so that you may live, and the Lord will be with you. 
Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to the Lord. At that time, Jesus left Samaria for Galilee, for Jesus himself testified that a prophet has no honor in his native place. When he came into Galilee, the Galileans welcomed him, since they had seen all he had done in Jerusalem at the feast, for they themselves had gone to the feast. Then he returned to Cana in Galilee, where he had made the water wine. Now there was a royal official whose son was ill in Capernaum. When he heard that Jesus had arrived in Galilee from Judea, he went to him and asked him to come down and heal his son who was near death. Jesus said to him, Unless you people see signs and wonders, you do not believe. The royal official said to him, Sir, Come down before my child dies. Jesus said to him, You may go. Your son will live. The man believed what Jesus said to him and left. While the man was on his way back, his slaves met him and told him that his boy would live. He asked them when he began to recover. They told him the fever left yesterday afternoon about one father realized that just at that time Jesus had said to him your son will live and he and his whole household came to believe now this was the second sign Jesus did when he came to Galilee from Judea the gospel of the Lord praise, praise you Lord Jesus Christ, Christ. Well, good morning my brothers and sisters in Christ good morning a reminder we have a symbol on tonight Monday night 630 here at the church so hopefully you can join us we also have our Lenten mission that will be on the 22nd and the 23rd of March so today we have with us the reading from John and the story of the miraculous healing and when you look at this at this particular passage, there's so much that we could focus on. But as I was going through and pondering on it, I tended to focus on the, the man, on the royal official. Who is this royal official? While we don't know his name, we can glean a lot about him. First of all, since he was a royal official, that meant he was in the service of Herod Antipas, Herod, the puppet king of the, uh, of the Romans, the false, the false king of the Jews. And he was also probably a Gentile. And we, we gather this from just the flow of John's gospel here and what has taken place before. We had the Samaritan, we had the Samaritan woman, and Jesus in the John is focusing Jesus, including the Gentiles in the story of salvation, in the salvation of all mankind. The second thing we can gather from, from this about the man is that he loved his son. This was a royal official. He had many servants and slaves. He could have easily dispatched one of his underlings to go and summon Jesus with his authority as a royal official. But he went himself. He didn't trust anyone else the life of his child. And so he makes the trek. And just so you know, it's not an easy, it's not an easy journey. It's about a 25 mile walk through hill country, with 25 miles up and down the hills. The third thing, he had faith. He had heard about Jesus. 
He had heard about the miraculous thing that Jesus did. And he wanted that miracle for his son. So he goes and he seeks out Jesus. When Jesus kind of presses him about the fact that these people need signs in order to believe, he simply says, Sir, just come so my child will live. And Jesus resonates with his faith and he tells them, Go, your son will live. He calls Jesus, Sir. And think about that as a royal official, probably only a few world that he showed that deference to. But here he is before this itinerant creature basically saying, sir, I believe you can save my child. Please come. You know, but think about what happens after that. He'd walked 25 miles up and down hills to Cana with the sole purpose to see the man who believed and saved his child. 25 miles away, his son, gravely ill, burning up with a fever, lays on a bed in Capernaum. And there you are, standing in front of this man that you have faith says, go. And what does the man do? <coughs> he turns and returns home. Now, Jesus didn't give him a potion to take with him. Jesus did give him some instructions on how to deal with this illness he didn't even give him a tassel from his cloak to touch the child. None of that. He just told him to go. And his son would live. And the royal official started walking back home. You see, John says he didn't, he didn't just start walking home. What does it say? He believed. He believed. From the moment Jesus said that his child would live, he believed. The word of Jesus for this man was sufficient. My brothers and sisters, what about our faith? Are we like the Galileans that need signs and wonders? Do we need to, to see in order for our faith to or the words, the gospel, enough. As we continue our celebration of this Mass, reflect on the words of the gospel that we've heard this past Sunday. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him might not perish but have eternal life. Amen. Let us pray for Georgia Covina for the intention of superscription for all the people dealing with the coronavirus and other illnesses. Those have asked for special prayers and for all our workers uh, building our church. Let us pray. The intercession of St. Joseph, hope and sick, patron of the dying, protector of the Holy Church, may guard us in these times of turmoil. Let us praise the Lord. Lord God, God. God. For Pope Francis, that he guide the church with wisdom and humility. Let us praise the Lord. Lord God, God. For all priests, bishops, and deacons, that they may have the courage to speak the truth in these times of uncertainty. 
Let's pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have prayer. Prayer. For all those who are sick, that they may link their suffering to the redemptive suffering of Jesus Christ for the salvation of the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have prayer. Prayer. For the quad process, that it builds the church by building disciples. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. And for all the prayers that we hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Almighty God, we thank you for the faith of the royal official. May we grow in faith through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and the work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. My brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of His name. And the of the Lord, the Lord May we receive, O Lord, we pray, the effects of this offering dedicated to you, so that we may be cleansed from old earthly ways and be renewed by growth in heavenly life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you will that our self deny should give you thanks, humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us imitate you in your kindness, and so we glorify you with countless angels as with one voice of praise we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Saint Faustina has many beautiful quotes on the Holy Eucharist. This is one of hers. One thing alone sustains me, and that is Holy Communion. Jesus concealed in the host is everything to me. From the tabernacle I draw strength, power, courage, and light. Here I seek consolation in time of anguish. I would not know how to give glory to God if I did not have the Eucharist in my heart. You therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He himself is the word that brings salvation to the hand you extend to sinners the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves have turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now, celebrating the reconciliation, Christ has brought us to you in you, sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill, when we celebrate these mysteries. For when about to give his life to set us free as he reclined at supper, he himself took bread into his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, on that same evening, he took the chalice of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, drink of it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you, 
what you have bestowed on us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly beseech you to accept us also together with your Son, and in this saving banquet graciously to endow us with his very Spirit, who takes away everything that estranges us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace among all people. And may he keep us in communion with Francis our Pope and Louis our Bishop and all the bishops and your entire people. Just as you have gathered us now at the table of your Son, so also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph our spouse, with your blessed apostles and all the saints, with our brothers and sisters and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring them to share Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus our Lord. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory of the Lord is now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look now on our sins from the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. Who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. <laughs> Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you stand on my heart, but I only say the word, and my soul shall be May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for each other. Amen. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. May your holy gifts, O Lord, we pray, give us life by making us new, and by sanctifying us, lead us to things eternal, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated now for Ashton. Good morning. Good morning. Our readings today seem to hit me a bit deeper in my life than I had expected. It seemed that it, the words of these readings started to fill cracks in my foundation that I wasn't aware that I had before this week. The readings today are about trust. In our first reading, we hear about change. And it sounds like a great change. Um, with new heavens, with joy and rejoicing. But also at the end, you hear, they shall live in the houses they build. This insinuates that change does not come without effort and without work. We still have to build our houses that we're gonna live in for the Lord. And we have to build that trust that 
he will have a strong foundation for us and we won't be destroyed or lost. And in our gospel for today, we hear of the trust from the royal man that went back home to his son. He went with pure trust, not knowing if his son had lived or he had died. And he was glorified for it, and his son did live. My aunt and I had a conversation this week, and it was kind of funny words just fell out of my mouth that I hadn't even thought of before. We were talking about the temptations and just things that were seen on the surface right now and just everything going on in the world and with, ever, with us personally. And I looked at her and I said, you know, I believe God is like a hurricane, or it's like a hurricane with the way that we live. The devil seems to beat us from every side with stronger winds and stronger forces than we can imagine. But there within it all, and in the eye of the hurricane, is God. And there's his love, there's his trust, and there's his peace. And he surrounds that hurricane, and he's also in the middle of it. He never leaves our side. So my challenge for you this week is to trust, to gain a deeper understanding of the love that God has for us. And remember that no matter how bad of times we have, he is there in the middle of it. And no matter how dark of times, those are indeed the times that he's taken to build his saints for a greater future. Thank you. Very good, Ashley. Thank you very much. Always enjoy your challenges. <laughs> Got a cute email here. The boss found a boy in the stock room just standing around doing nothing. How much do you get paid a week? He asked the boy. The boy replied, $20. Taking a $20 bill out of his wallet, the boss gave it to the boy and said, here, take this, get out of here, and don't come back. As the boy walked out the door, the boss said to the manager, how long has that lazy kid been working for us? He doesn't work for us, replied the manager. He just delivered a package. <laughs> <laughs> the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, the Amen. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mass is ended. Go in peace. Thank you. Thank you to God. Let us pray the prayer to the Holy Spirit. Come, Come Holy Spirit. Spirit. Oh, God, be faithful. And be the Send forth your Spirit, and we shall be created. And you shall renew the face of the earth. Let us pray, O oh God, by the light of the Holy Spirit, instruct the hearts of the faithful. Grant that by the same Holy Spirit we may be truly wise and ever rejoice in his consolation. Through Christ our Lord. Hello, Deacon Norm Cantrell, on behalf of Father Patty, Deacon Ed, and all the parishioners of Most Holy Trinity Catholic Church, we'd like to thank you for listening to our recording of the Holy Mass. Now, as you may know, we are currently building a new church, and one of the major fundraisers for the new church is our spring raffle. And I'd like to give everyone an opportunity that views our Masses to help us in this process. Our spring raffle is actually 16 individual raffles. We give away a total of over $15,000 in cash and prizes. There are eight $250 raffles, three $3,000 raffles, four non-cash prizes of trips to the beach, to the lake, to the mountain, and also a boat cruise, as well as our grand prize of $5,000. Now, the unique thing about our raffle is that every ticket purchased is eligible for every one of the drawings, so you have 16 opportunities to win. If you'd like to help us in our endeavor, please contact me via my email. That's ncantrell at biloxidiocese.org. That's n-c-a-n-t-r-e-l-l-e -L -L -E at biloxidiocese.org. Thank you for your support. Thank you for watching our videos, and may God bless.